Greetings, my beautiful lovelies, and happy St. Patrick's Day. Today, I'm going to be tasting these two little things that lovely Katie sent me. Katie, thank you so much for sending these to me. I posted a little article about these on social media, and Katie immediately replied that she'd be sending me some of these. So thank you so much for sending them to me and getting them here just in time for St. Patrick's Day. This is Orion's Irish Potatoes, and this is the original Fudge Kitchen's Irish Potatoes. Now, these little candies look like potatoes. They're very popular during St. Patrick's Day, and they're very regional. They come from the Philadelphia, Delaware, South Jersey area, and Katie grew up seeing these all the time and thought they were everywhere, but they are not. They're very, very regional, although I did read in an article that you can find them on the West Coast. Seize Candies also makes a version of this as well. So I've never had these before, so I'm excited to taste them. I was very surprised to read that these contain no potatoes at all. Although they look like potatoes, they contain no potatoes at all. So I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to do a DIY potato candy version. This is an old fashioned candy. Some of you have requested this, so I thought, why not make it now? So I'm gonna make that candy as well and then do a little taste test comparison. Before I do the tasting, let me show you what I did in the kitchen beforehand to make the potato candies. I will also put in the description the link to the original recipe that I adapted this from. So this candy is very, very simple. It only contains four ingredients. So we're gonna begin with a potato. Take a small potato and we're gonna boil it till it's very, very tender. You want a knife to go in there super easily because we don't want any lumps in our candy. Once our potato is boiled, we're going to peel it and mash it while it's still warm. And I just did this on a plate with a fork. Make sure it's really, really smooth. So we're gonna add a capful of vanilla extract and a bunch of salt. We need that salt because this is going to be a very sweet candy. Again, we're gonna take our fork and make sure we thoroughly mush this all up till it's nice and smooth. Next, we're gonna take our mashed potatoes and put them into a stand mixer. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can do this with an electric hand mixer as well. And now we're gonna add the powdered sugar. I'm gonna do this in a half a cup increments until it forms a really nice dough. You want to have like a Play-Doh kind of consistency. You don't want to stick to your hands. You want it to come together. You don't want it to be too dry though because when we roll up our candy, we don't want it to crack. So you want it to be really pliable and supple and Play-Doh like. Not too mushy either, otherwise you're gonna have trouble rolling it up. Next, we're gonna roll the dough out between two pieces of wax paper. We're gonna dust it with a little bit more powdered sugar to help keep it from sticking. I'm gonna roll it out to about three eighths to a quarter of an inch thick. Then we're gonna take a knife and square up the edges so we have a nice rectangle. So the traditional filling for the candy is peanut butter and I'm not a huge fan of peanut butter so I thought I'd do the traditional version and then I'd also do a chocolate version because I prefer chocolate. <laughs> so then after we've squared up the dough, we're gonna apply our peanut butter in a nice even layer, leaving about a half an inch on the top without any peanut butter. Then we're gonna carefully roll up the candy into a nice tight jelly roll and then wrap it in the wax paper and use the wax paper to kind of tighten the roll. Twist it on the ends and place it in the refrigerator before we slice it up. So we're gonna do the same thing with the chocolate version. I'm just using a chocolate hazelnut spread here. And again, same thing, we're gonna leave a little border at the top, roll it up, wrap it in wax paper and place it in the refrigerator. So with the scraps that we trimmed from the rectangles, we can also make another version of the potato candy, one that looks more like the Irish potatoes. So what we do is take the little scraps, roll them into kind of oval balls. The more lumpy or bumpier, the better, because they look more like potatoes. And then you can roll them either in cocoa powder or cinnamon or a combination of both. I didn't have any cocoa powder in my pantry, so I used a little bit of chocolate shavings that I had and mixed that with cinnamon, and then roll the little balls into that powder. And then I dusted the excess powder off so it would have a really kind of authentic, cute potato look. And they're absolutely adorable. So that brings us to our current state. Here are my two rolls of potato candy. It slices really easily. Great. And now let's cut the chocolate version, which I am excited about. I'm cutting these about a quarter of an inch thick. That seemed to hold up its spiral a little bit better, probably because there's some coconut oil or something that firms it up a bit. Now that our homemade candies are finished, let's go ahead and do the taste test. Orion's is from Linwood, Pennsylvania. They've been making this candy since 1989, although it states here that it's a Philadelphia tradition for over 100 years. Ooh, and immediately I smell cinnamon. Yes, ooh, and coconut. 
It smells a little bit like suntan lotion. <laughs> Take a couple of these out. And pretty hard on the outside, have a little bit of a kind of scratch texture on them and covered in cinnamon. Let's compare that to the original Fudge Kitchen version and these ones look like they're made in New Jersey. They have a bunch of different locations in New Jersey. And they're about the same size as the Orions. And the dusting looks to be a little bit lighter. These ones don't smell as strongly of cinnamon as the Orions. And the Orions seem to be harder on the outside. Ooh, pretty firm. That's what it looks like inside. Actually looks a lot like a baked potato. That's funny. And let's cut the Orions one. Ooh, a little bit different texture. The Orions one seems to be a little bit more crumbly, but again, very similar to a baked potato. All right, let's give them a taste. Let's try the Orions one first. Get the ducky mouths. Mmm. Mmm. Oh boy. That is tooth achingly sweet, but not really what I expected. These taste like the center of a, an almond joy. Very, very coconutty and sweet. I mean, the cinnamon flavor is pretty light. I was expecting it to be more cinnamony than coconutty. I don't know why, maybe because I smelled all of the cinnamon, but it's very coconutty. Well, the texture is a little bit different than an Almond Joy or a Mounds Bar. That has a distinct texture of desiccated coconut where you have that toothy kind of granular almost bite or fibrous bite of the, the coconut. This, the coconut's much finer. Mm, mm-hmm, mm, I'm so sweet. And there's a little bit of a chew to it. Not quite taffy-like, but a little bit of a chew. Nice. All right, let's try the fudge kitchen version. Hmm. Interesting, very different. This one I feel like has more of a coconutty texture. I can definitely feel the texture of the desiccated coconut in there. It's not as fine as the other one. And this coconut flavor is a little bit lighter. The Orions taste a little bit more like Malibu rum, while this tastes a little bit more just like coconut. When you do them side by side, this one doesn't taste as coconutty as the Orions, but the Orions one tastes almost more like an extract. It's very, very coconutty flavor. This one is very, very sweet as well. It doesn't seem as sweet as the Orions. Of the two, I think I'm kind of leaning towards the fudge kitchen. Although the Orions has more of a concentrated coconut flavor, which initially I thought I liked better. I like the fact that the fudge kitchen isn't quite as sweet, even though it's very sweet, not as tooth achingly sweet as the Orions. But texture wise, I think I actually prefer the smoothness of the Orions. It's more like a baked potato than the toothiness of the fudge kitchen. But I think I like the flavor of the fudge kitchen more than I like the flavor of the Orions. Now let's compare that with these, which actually contain potato. These of course are not gonna taste anything like the Irish potatoes because they're a completely different type of candy, but let's taste them anyways. I'm gonna taste the original potato candy first with the peanut butter. Here we go. Oh. Mmm. And that's pretty good. It's very, very sweet as well. The texture is completely different than the Irish potatoes. It's much smoother and more like a fondant. You bite into it, it kind of just melts away. You have a very intense flavor of peanut butter in there, but it's a nice balance of the peanut butter. I think it has to do with the amount of salt that we actually put in the potato candy and it goes really well with the peanut butter. And I'm not even a peanut butter fan. Yeah, that's a lot better than I thought it would be. And it doesn't taste all of potato. None. None whatsoever. Mm -mm. A little bit of vanilla in there. Mm. Let's try the chocolate hazelnut version. Mm. Huh. I'm actually surprised by that. I actually like the peanut butter version better. The chocolate hazelnut just tastes like frosting there. It just makes it just too sweet. And the flavor really doesn't stand up to the aggressive sweetness of the potato candy. I'm totally shocked. The peanut butter one tastes better. I'm so glad I did two versions. 
Yes, the peanut butter one is much more like a Reese's peanut butter cup in terms of that combination of salty and sweet and peanut butter and is better than the chocolate version. Although the chocolate version held up better when, when sliced and I think that has to do with the amount of oil that's in the peanut butter. It was a little bit more slippery. So when you sliced it, it tend to ooze out more. Now let's try these. I am so pleased how these little guys turned out. They look so stinking cute, just like mini new potatoes. Love them. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> no, although they look really cute inside. They look just like a potato. I don't really care for that one too much at all. Very, 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 very sweet, that fondant. And the cinnamon, while it complements and adds some flavor, it doesn't really kind of stand up to the amount of sugar that's in this recipe. The flavor is very similar to a candy I had in my Emmy Eat Scotland video. I believe they were called Taddies. <laughs> they were a candy that were dusted in cinnamon on the outside. That candy on the inside was very firm and kind of crunchy, not fondant-like and soft like this, but that too was coated in cinnamon. That was very, very cinnamony, but the combination of sugar and cinnamon is, is similar. Also, the gestalt of trying to look like a potato as well. I think the tatties are better than these in the sense that there was enough cinnamon to kind of stand up to the amount of sugar in that. <laughs> so while these look very cute, they don't taste all that great. So of the DIY potato candies, the original peanut butter combination is the best. I'm shocked. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. And Katie, thanks again so much for sending this to me. I really appreciate my first taste of Irish potatoes. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy that one. I hope you guys learned something. Share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media so you can keep up with all the things I'm tasting and making. And like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in my next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. Oh no, you got mashed.